So the individual on your screen, ladies and gentlemen, um, is a guy who has a lot of experience in music. Um, taking my time to, to sit down and read some of the things that he's been involved in over the years. I was really, really impressed with the, the level of understanding that he's had to the entertainment industry. But more importantly, I think it's really, really important for us to discuss and delve into the motivations and the way that he's approached entertainment from since day one. And he has experience on the decks, he has experience on the microphone, and I didn't know this, but he actually has experience in front of the camera as well. So that is something yeah. very interesting that we're going to go into tonight. Um, on a personal note, I met him back in 2015. He probably yeah. wouldn't remember that. But that was the first year that Selector Carey and I went to Barbados for crop over. I, I remember, I remember. On the boat rides for Bayesian Tube on the, sun, yeah. on the Sunday. The Bayesian Tube boat ride. And that was the first yeah. time I, I ever got introduced to him. And we've linked up ever so often after. We, are, we were official road DJs for Mirage, the band in St. Vincent. And I have to say, I've always been impressed with his professionalism and his energy as an entertainer as a performer, as a DJ. So, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Kevin King, a.k.a. <laughs> the natural born club killer, Kevin Crown. Let me, let me, let me do it. Let, let me do it. You know, from here, the voice, you know, it's the NBCK, natural born club killer, energy godson. You're truly Kevin Crown, always the vibe, the music, and the energy in the room. Energy, energy, yeah. energy. Shamari, yeah. what's up, man? What's good, man? I'm doing I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Despite COVID getting going on, I'm doing good. Yeah. I see, ch yeah. I see, Chachi in the chat call it sensei Kevin. So oh. <laughs> that yeah, is definitely yeah, yeah. something we have we have to we have to get into later on. Uh, I just want to yeah. let everybody know as well. We're gonna try this a little bit differently tonight. In the second part of the interview, um, mm. you all can send the questions just by clicking the little um, question mark icon and sending your questions to Kevin as well. But I want to okay. deal with the questions that came in to us earlier today on the Groove Theory Instagram. So once okay. again, um, for everybody that sent some questions earlier, we're going to get into that in a while. Um, okay. First of all, Kevin, which is the question I ask everybody when they come on these lives, um, which is the big question right now, how have you been personally been dealing with the COVID-19 situation in, in, in your neck of the woods? Well, um, you know, of course, social distancing. Um, you know, I'm, I've always been sanitary, um, coming from a construction background. I'm always, I was always used to washing my hands, you right. know, uh, multiple times a day um, from going to the gym. You know, you leave the gym, you come home, you know, you have young kids around. You know, the washing the hand thing wasn't a problem. Um, I took it serious from the beginning. So I went out and I got, you know, my boxes of gloves. I got my mask. I, I stocked up on food. Um, just really keeping busy, you know, keeping busy, catching up on things around the house, around my studio um, that, I didn't have time to do because, you know, we always on the road, you know, it's right. from one, one plane to our next plane to our next country. And when you're home, you know, sometimes you want to take a deep breath and try to live a normal life. And, yeah. you know, some people don't understand when I say, when I take a vacation, I take a vacation in my house, you know, right. I, I, you know, you understand. So I've just taken this time to, um, catch up, improve, you know, um, I try to, uh, you know, increase my, uh, my musical library on my laptop, but my, my, my laptop crashed and I had to, and I'm rebuilding some crates, restructuring some crates that I had because right. it, it, the Serato backup time machine messed it all up. DJ right, should right. know. Every DJ went through this at least one time in his career where you had to relocate music, music. So I'm, you know, in the process of relocating my music and, you know, just keeping, keeping busy, advising I a lot of DJs as well. And that crate management is something I want to get into tonight as well because I okay. um, actually had a conversation with one of our friends, Levi Chin from Solution. I've mm. been talking to a lot of DJs as well. And that's actually one of the things that people are wondering when it comes down to, especially touring DJs and guys like you and myself that yeah. could play and actually mic at the same time. So we'll get right. into that. Um, but I first want to start to a point, which is something I didn't know. Mm. So today... I came across an article in Jamaica Observer in 2014. Yes. And it stated that, and you can correct me if any of the information is wrong, okay. um, that initially Kevin Crown wanted to be a baller. Is that yes. true? That's 100% so, that's, that's correct. I wanted to play basketball. This, um, is like, this is like pro NBA basketball. Yeah, well, I wanted, well, I wanted to learn. It, we was nowhere near that stage, right? Right. But I want, as a kid... That's what I wanted to do, but growing up in the Brownsville section of Brooklyn, you know, and my mother being um, from, from Grenada, she was one of those overprotective Caribbean mothers that right. said, Kevin, 
you cannot go outside, period. And the park was diagonal from my house. As a, it was across the street. I could look at the house from, I could look at the, the park from my house. Right. But my mother said, no, you can't go outside. And I didn't have any brothers, and I could only see my cousins on the weekends. So right. um, my father, he had, you know, a, a little humble setup. You know that little Gemini mixer? I forget the number, but the Gemini mixer with the wooden panels on the sides. Yes, yes. That, that one. He had, right. <laughs> and, then, and then he had two linear tech turntables, and he yeah. used to, the way he used to listen to his music was records. He used right. to buy records and just, and just listen to it. Right. So because I couldn't go outside and, and, and I, I really love to dance, I, I, I figured out, you know what? I could make my own dance mixtapes by using records. Right. And, and that's how it initially started at the age of 12. That's what it was. It was just me messing around with my dad's equipment and, you know, just, just figuring things out. It was never to be a touring DJ, to be famous, to, 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 it was ne it was never none of those things. It was yeah, just because, because because ironically, in reading it, I kind of got the impression that you I don't want to say fell into this by accident, yeah. but technically speaking, because you actually picked up records because you wanted to organize music yes. for yourself. Yes, you grew a love and a passion for DJing based on that. Correct. That's correct. That's 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 one hundred percent correct. Um, I just I just wanted to make my own mixtapes because I come from cassette days, and sometimes you would buy the cassettes, oop, 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 and oop. and sometimes maybe you wouldn't it wouldn't be the right speed or maybe fifteen minutes of it or yo why they put this here and they started here yeah, yeah 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 why they do that so I instead of you know how we used to cut the put cassettes, cassettes and splice <laughs> them and use yeah. the two tape decks and all that instead of doing all that. I said, yo, let me just buy the records and make my mixtapes the way I want to make them. Correct. So when I first started DJing, I didn't know about headphones. I didn't, I figured out everything. I'm, I'm a self-taught DJ from, from the headphones to the crossfader. I'm self-taught. Yeah, I, I'm self-taught. Um, up until about the age of 14. So for like two years, everything was self-taught. At the wow. age of 14, um, I linked up with some like-minded individuals and um, we formed a sound system called King Crown 2010. What happened was, it was so ironic, they actually formed it. Well, it wasn't King Crown 2010 yet. It was King Crown. They formed it six months before I joined the sound. My sound system name, because everybody needed a sound system name. You need yeah. a sound. Yeah. My sound system name was King Royal because my real name is Kevin King. Kevin King, so correct. Yeah. That's, my, that's my real name. The sound name that I met their name was King Crown. I'm like, King Royal, King Crown. So we just migrated the two. I had my own records. I had certain equipment. We just migrated the two, and we all became King Crown. And everybody thinks, you know, Kevin Crown and King Crown comes from my name. It just comes from one of the selectors lived on, in, on, on Crown Street in Crown Heights. Our next selector lived in King's Highway. And they just said King Crown, Right. The 2010 part came because there's another King Crown that <laughs> existed in the same kind of field we were in. And right. we was like, at, at first we was like, yo, we got to change the name. Then we yeah. was like, yo, we, we got to clash for the name. Let's clash. We were very aggressive. You right. know, we, we, we young, we got to clash for the name. And then you said we started adding things on. King Crown International, KCI. And we was like, yo, bro, they're going to diss us because we never travel nowhere. So we can't be international because we're right. local. So then we was like, the almighty King Crown sound station. It was like, yo, that's too long. It's not going to sound good in a dub plate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? So then we was like, King Crown 2010. And this is like in the 90s. You know what I'm saying? So we wasn't thinking 2010 was even going to... We was thinking nowhere near 2010. Wow. Right? So we said, King Crown 2010, 2010. And you know, we put it on a flyer. And we started voicing it. And we just became King Crown 2010. And we, we started... From from those from from like ninety eight ninety nine, right. we were putting two thousand and ten on our clothes. You know, we go into art stores and get those little felt iron on things. Everything I had twenty ten, where we could find an embroidery place. All my jackets back in the day, day said twenty ten. When we started driving, we put big twenty ten across our windshields. People thought it was a gang, but that's that was just a click. King right. Crown twenty ten. So that's where it started from. Right. That's where the the initial my initial idea of branding. And it wasn't even, I wasn't even thinking about its branding. 
it was just representing. It was representing right. my own. That's what it was. That's what it initially started from. As I say, representing your own, um, I want to take you back a little bit to 2018. Um, yes. That's when we first linked up in St. Vincent. I was you, uh, Selector Carey, um, Young Chow, and myself. Yes. And I yes. always remember when we did the party, Slippery, when we were in Vinci on the Sunday. And right. I saw you literally run up and down in the crowd while we were playing. And I was like, yeah. yo, I can I can believe it because a lot of people think that, you know, as DJs, um, when we perform, we perform. But other than that, we just in the back, just relaxing and liming. But one thing that you said to me is that when you go wherever you go and you see people, especially Grenadians, um, mm. you feel like at that point in time, you need to be able to represent as well too now. Yeah. It's about the party. Yes, it's about yes. the performance, but it's also about you enjoying the party. And I also read that because of your song system experience, people thought that you were Jamaican. Um, yes. or, and they, they, they mistook you for being Jamaican. So how yes. important was it for you to stamp your Grenadian roots in what is that you're doing now? Well, I mean... It, 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 it to, to to be honest, it it wasn't that important because I never felt like I needed to prove it. Like you said, that article was in like 2014 or 2015 or wherever it was. Yeah. And you you could figure out that I was Grenadian because I said it there. Every Correct. internet, every TV, every internet, every interview I've ever done, every award I've ever won, I've always said I'm from Grenada. And you know, before social media. My family in New York City has been so instrumental in keeping events. I, I, used to, I used to do, you know, I used to MC and DJ the bingos, me and King Crown. We used to do um, um, big barbecues, some of the biggest Grenadian functions that raise enough money to go back and build school, a school in Grenada. You know, wow. I, used to, I, I, used to, I used to escort when I was a teenager in the Miss Grenada USA pageant. I used to dance, you know, at the shows. So for me, it was never about proving I was Grenadian. It was just like, I'm Grenadian. It's not a choice, you know, right. but I did realize people that used to think I was, I was Jamaican because of the way I spoke and my approach to dance hall. But I, I, if you're going to do something, I think you should do it as authentic as possible. And the way I grew up, you know, we grew up, everybody grew up playing dance hall music. I was actually the soca guy. I was the soca com component for King Crown. Right. I was, when we went out, when we inside, we we played everything. We inside we played dance hall, we played hip hop, but outside my job wasn't even an MC. My job was to play the soca and then when I came off the sound, I would just dance and have fun. They had we had a different mics man, we had a different reggae guy, we had a different hip hop guy. That's when that's when we were kids. My component was soca. But there's something in me that says, Kevin, never be complacent. I have a saying. If you're not evolving, you're dissolving. So you should never yeah. feel like, Oh, I'm good enough. So you know, um, I just developed my 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 musical knowledge, not just in dancehall, but in um, hip hop, in all genres of music. But because dancehall was the lane that was presented to me for many reasons, because of uh, because of wh where I grew up, where I partied, where I spent my energy, the music that I actually liked, and just the the temperature of the music, me dancing and everything, um, right. I, that was just my lane. And and you know, I just got the opportunity. To, to travel at a young age. I went to Japan in 2003 for the first time. And right. we went back, we went back four times. And, you know, dance hall was just the lane. And I, I you know, um, I'm, uh, I'm really fortunate to say that's, that's something I, I, I kind of stomped my name in, in dance hall music for a long time. But I don't think the music has anything to do with where you're from. I, I just, I, 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 it's, it's, it's bad to say, but I don't think just because you're from a place that automatically makes you better Correct. or you, sh you should, yo, you're, you're, you're from Trinidad. So you should be, be the best at Soka. You're from this. You should be the best at like Biggie Smalls. He was Jamaican. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Busta Rhymes is Jamaican. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mal Malcolm X mother was from Grenada. Oh, really? right. Right. Yes, Mal Malcolm X mothers from Grenada. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying, going to, to say that it doesn't really matter where you're from. It's where you put your focus and your energy. You know what I mean? But um, dance hall is definitely where I got my first, my first taste of the big stage. I did fully loaded two, so two I, times. So I want to ask you something. I want to ask you something with that. Um, which is str straight off a point I had before. Um, mm. for everybody right now who 
in the Caribbean, because we have a lot of Caribbean DJs, especially that look onto this. Mm -hmm. Give them an idea of since you have the experience with both with dance and soca, and yes. coming from the country that we come from, Trey and Tobago, um, there's always been this discussion in the realms of trade entertainment that we don't take um soca seriously outside of the carnival season. So mm. kind of give everybody an understanding now of how far soca has come as a, as a representative genre, especially in the United States and where you're from, where you're located right now. When I was coming up, there was soca was was underground. There was a niche market, small niche market for soca that was underground. Um, I can't. I when I came up, there were hip hop parties that just played hip hop. Right. Dancehall parties, reggae dancehall that just played dancehall, and then soca. You know, Labor Day time, everybody would love soca. It'd be seasonal, but then you had the little small niche market that was the soca heads, right? right? I was the person that would listen to the soca heads, but yo, I don't have. I would get all the music, but I didn't really have a place to play it because that market was so small, and I wasn't a part of that market. Right. But um, over the years now. Soka has, I, I, Soka has exploded. Um, since, since I, 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 now I could say I'm an advocate for Caribbean music, but definitely Soka music, the way dancehall music was my avenue. Soka music is now my avenue. Not saying I, I don't have a love for dancehall. Not saying I still don't listen to it. Not saying I still don't play it. But when I get hired, especially to fly on a plane, it's they're for hired. It's for Soka music. I'm a carnival, I'm a carnival circuit DJ. That's why, do what, that's, that, why, why do you think that's happened? Like, in, in your opinion, why do you think that's I, happened? I, I, I just, the first, li, 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 it's funny how I got my bus in the international soca stage. Because I would, I always played soca, you know, in New York in my sets, soca would play. Right. It was, it was carnival time in Jamaica five, six years ago. Right. And I was playing in a club fiction and it was carnival time. So, you know, Jamaica, everybody want to hear a little soca. So I'm beating out the dance hall. I'm beating the cartel. I'm beating the dubs the right way. You know what I'm saying? People were always, yo, yo, my you, where you come from? I come from New York. How do you know how to play like this? I was like, this is the way I've always played music. Correct. And I, I, I was happy that the, it validated that what I was doing was good because I used to play the way that way in New York and be like, yo, how come they're not really moving? Should I change the way I'm, I'm playing? Am I doing something wrong? Right. Then I went, I toured, and it was like, yo, we love the way you play. From right. the teasing of the records to the, the genre transition changes without stopping the music. You know, they loved all of that. So I went into a soca set. Somebody from Digicel said, who's that? We need him on the truck. So they put me on the truck. Um, I, I believe the first year was me, Kurt Riley, um, Sparky, uh, a couple of the DJs, and right. by the by the end of the road, we had about ten thousand people behind the truck. Yeah, that was that was the first year. They brought me back the second year. That's when I met Euphoric. That's when I met I Hype Man and Euphoric. Same thing. The vibes is crazy. From there, promoter from Barbados, um, craved the band. Big shout out to Avery. He said, "Yo, bro, I want you to come to Barbados." And after I came to Barbados, um. It was just like, wow, this DJing on a truck is very different from DJing on a stage, totally De different. DJing in a club, DJ and and it it it, it forced me to, to to understand the science and the synergy of DJing on a truck. Right. You know, it, it's it's been like I said, five six years. Um, I don't want to say perfected because that goes against my way of thinking as far as evolving. Because if you're perfect, there ain't nowhere else to go. Exactly. Right. So I've, I've, I've definitely came up with a, with a strategy that, 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 that percentage-wise, I'm doing very good winning on the road as far as playing, delivering the music, understanding the science and understanding the, the terrain. Yeah. Understanding, like, listen, in the hot sun, you could be playing your ass off. You see at 12 o'clock in the hot sun, especially if they cross the stage, no matter what you do, they are not moving. And it's not because they don't like the music. It's because they're hot <laughs> and they're tired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've seen DJs hit the panic button because they look and people, yo, people are not moving. 
And I'm like, yo, bro, relax. Relax, yeah, yeah. The sun is hot, which I this brings me. out since 6 a.m. in the morning. Right. And, right. and for, for females who are, who are tuning in. Doing the know. makeup. Doing makeup, so they're up Doing like makeup. Three. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. They, so d d some DJs, that, that totally, they don't understand because that goes, to, goes back to what you were saying. I go in the crowd. I want to feel what the crowd feels yeah. when you guys, when the DJs, especially a good DJ. You know what I mean? And you guys, you guys, you guys, that was my first time in St. Vincent and you guys was crushing it. And I saw, I saw the yes. Grenadians in there and I say, yo, let me go in there and run up and down with them just to, <laughs> just to feel yeah, what it, what, the energy and what it feels like. Yeah. Because that's, that's another thing. You see a DJ pull a power soaker segment when you shouldn't pull a power soaker segment and it Correct. doesn't work. Yeah. And, it, and then, then they're like, these people don't like power. No, you no. didn't pull it you at the get, right time. As, as we like to say, you didn't tell the story properly to get right. to that point. Yeah, to yeah. get to that point. Right. So when you when you pull the trigger, people's like, yo, my heart rate ain't there yet. My energy is not there for that. So right. when I when I go in and also I, I, I do it because I'm a high energy dude. I want to see how long I could sustain a power segment in a crowd. Right. You, you, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's different for different countries. St. Vincent... St. Vincent and Grenada, you yeah, could go. St. Vincent and Grenada, there's a different <laughs> You, you a could different go. <laughs> you could go. So when, when I'm in the crowd, for me looking on the stage, I know exactly what's going on. I know exactly when it's too much is too much. I know exactly how to see something before it happens. So people say, yo, you guys are inciting madness. No. We've seen this before. I've been in the crowd before. I know what's normal. I know what's abnormal. I know what this is no good. And, you know, um, at the end of the day, when the crowd really trusts you, they're going to listen to you. Yeah. You know, they're going to listen to you. And, I've, and, and, and it's, it's an amazing feeling when you can tell 10,000 people to do one thing and you see 10,000 people do it. And that's the power of Caribbean yeah, music, soca, I, I, soca and music. That's why, and that's why, again, um, because as I was telling a couple of the DJs before in live, uh, my name was built because I went to the university here and I mm. knew all the Caribbean islands and I knew the music that was coming from the islands. So when I would go to parties here and play a song from Grenada or St. Lucia where it wasn't so cool to do that, everybody right. like, yo, like, what song is that? And right. now we're starting to see where the roots of soca is impacting everybody all around the region. And that's why it's important, again, as I tell all Trey and Tobago DJs, yes, we, 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 we are a heavily influenced dancehall culture, but at the yeah. same point in time, understanding the importance of soca right now is extremely important to developing yes. yourself as a DJ. Uh, understanding understanding to the, 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 the soca. Yeah, the totality of it. The not totality. Just, not just, not just Trinidad, not no. just Grenada, everywhere. Because every, not, and, and, it, to me, it's, ahead, about it's, it's about representation. And I think even if you, like one of the things that, I, that I would, I've been glad for is that I would go to events and I'd play one song for somebody in an island that everybody would forget, which I've seen you guys do as well too. Right. And right. the power of representation in an event um, is something that could never be matched or replaced. And when you could do that, people will remember your performance because yes. you have made a, a, a conscientious decision to represent everybody. On, yes. on, that, on that note, um, one of the things that we try to do in group theory is, is bring people to the understanding that we all have stories. Yes. And um, I know for a fact that you probably did not do DJing full-time and that you have a degree as well, right? Yes. Um, yes. How challenging was it for you to make that transition from being of working a nine-to-five doing all the private stuff that you're doing, doing events, doing promos, doing X, Y, Z, going back to 95. How challenging was that for you to make the decision that, yo, I want to follow this full time? Well, um, I would always say that I did exactly what I was supposed to do because um, I'm, a, I'm an electrician. I'm a local three right. electrician. I, I went to school for electrics. I have a degree in labor studies and science. Because Man. I'm an electrician, because I, I'm an electrician and because I went through one of the hardest things in my life is going through that apprenticeship. It, it, um, and, and not to mention my, my martial arts and that appre it, 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 the, the apprenticeship, it gave me this attitude that you never quit. You never quit. If you're going to lose sleep, if you're going to be in pain, if you're going to be dirty, if you're going to be sick, you never quit. 
I always knew I was going to have to make a decision because I, ne I never wanted to be anything but a DJ. Once I got the, the, the hunger for it, I went to college at 16. I went into radio station in college at 16. I was my first taste of radio. That's right. what I wanted to do. But right. when I was young, you know, and even to a degree now, you want to make your parents proud. You know, my mother yeah. and father, God bless them, they in Grenada right now um, up on a hill in, in St. Andrews, you know, looking down on everybody. Um, I always wanted to make them proud. And they used to tell me, DJ is not it. You can't make a career out of DJing. It's so funny you say that because uh, when we were talking to Selector Carey last week, um, mm. somebody sent in a question. It's like, you know, how do I convince my parents of this? And right. Carey's response was, when he started to make money and he could contribute to the household, his right. family, who was extremely religious, actually started to accept what he did. Because when, when Kerry was playing on 96.1 with us at the point in time, his own father didn't know that he was wow. on radio. You know? Wow. And I wow. think that is actually a question which I, I pose to every single DJ. Because again, we have a lot of young people who want to come into the art form. But as you rightfully said, your parents, your family, who yes. don't look at this creative expression sometimes to be a professional career. And right. I think it's up to, up, up to you as an individual to be able to prove to those people, and not just prove to those people, but prove to yourself that this is what you want. And as, as something that you've been saying, which was real profound to me today while, while I was reading it, is that you don't compete with anybody. You're competing with your own self. That's it. Because um, like you said, and every DJ, everybody... I'm speaking from a DJ aspect because this is a DJ platform, but you could take this as an artist, a performer, anybody who's creative. Everybody goes through stages where you want to prove to everybody, I, I belong here. I can do this. I am a DJ. You want to prove that. After you prove that you are, are not, because some people aren't, then you, you, you want to prove to yourself. You want to prove it to yourself. It's not about them. I want to prove it to myself because... Uh, you wouldn't you be lying every dj in here wouldn't be lying if there wasn't at least one set in your life where you went to bed and you cringed why did i do that yeah why did i do that and it messes you up you know what i mean and, and then you go back and you make a mistake and you fix it and then you you kill and then you you it's it's like it's like um you know they, they say dopamine like it's like a drug yeah. you know what i'm saying doing good doing good it's a drug when we do bad we do not like it. Everybody has bad days. We human Everybody, beings. Yeah, yeah. That we, has been, we, that's been a common tre thread with every single DJ. That right. We are our biggest critics. Right. And when people think that we don't hear what others say, especially when we perform, no. which actually, you know, as, as we are not point, I'm going to go to... Wait, let me get back to the question. Let me, let me not, let me yeah. answer the question. But let me answer yeah. the question. So yeah. you got to, you got to prove it to yourself. But as a, as a, I, I will say in this day and time, it's so much easier to exist as a DJ. When I was growing up, every week, every week, every week. Talk the things. Every make week, every week. Make sure I talk the things, yeah. Every yeah. week. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Every week. <laughs> hold on. Every week. Yeah, yeah. Every week. Yeah. Every week. Every week. Let, and let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If you didn't have everything that was hot, if you didn't have everything, I'm talking you're about... Going get, you're going to get boo! <laughs> you, if you, if it's your time, right? I'll give you an example. A rhythm like Brockout Rhythm. Right, Brock yes. Rhythm. You think you can play Brockout Rhythm and play the T.O.K. and don't play the Bounty? The Bounty or the Baby Sham. Or the Baby right? Sham. Or the, yeah. the two Baby Shams. Yeah. The two Bounties. Yeah. The two Wayne Wonders. <laughs> you think you could... You think you think you could say, and if I war, then I what? War! You don't come in with the baby sham. If you don't come in with the baby sham, people is gonna be like, "Who, who is are this? you? <laughs> who are you?" And and it was no nice guy. Yeah. It wasn't no nice guy. It was yo, come off the song. No, yeah, come no. off. Yeah, no, come off. Like, um, a lot of times I see young DJs, and I kind of I haze them a little bit because I'm like, yo, nobody made it easy for me, so I'm not gonna be on, yo. Yo, you good, you great, you great. You you did good. But why are you scratching on the wrong side of the platter? Right. <laughs> you ever see you ever seen a DJ scratch on the wrong side of the platter? Yeah. Like if I put if I put you on turntables, you wouldn't work. So I always I, I feel my I, like I'm a big brother to m majority of the DJs. And you know, I haze them a little bit, but as far as there's responsibilities. So you gotta be able to sustain your craft, meaning 
if you got to be able to invest in equipment, invest in equipment, invest in equipment. <laughs> and, all right. All right. If, if you don't have those things, it, it could be a, 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 a little small nine to five. It could be a little hustling that you're doing to get that initial investment, investing in equipment. I'm right. talking about, I am talking about a laptop, uh, a, a controller or and or console and speakers, because with those things, you can make money to sustain your craft. Correct. If you just have a laptop, you are not going to go in the club and they're going to automatically pay you, bro. Correct. But if you have speakers... And because me, I'm going to tell you, I have a sound system. I don't want to lift it. I don't want to lift speakers. I'm going right. to bring my laptop. I want to do what I do. I want to get my money and leave. Right. But somebody has to bring the speakers. Right. Somebody has to bring the console. You could be that person. You could invest and make money right off the bat. I want to be a DJ, but you need to make some money. Invest a little bit. If you can't invest, you need to save up. People, people invest in what they want to invest in. If you buy Jordans every week... Stop for two months. Stop buying Jordans every week. You know what I'm saying? Think, think about where you're spending your money. Do some research. Build your credit. Build your credit. Trust yourself. that this is, this is a lifelong investment. If you have a little credit card, swipe it. Get 18 months, 0% interest. Now is a good time because there's a lot of good deals on credit. Invest. Nice laptop, speakers, headphones, microphone. And and everything else will come. You can make some money. I'm pretty sure if somebody saw you making money, they wouldn't deter you. Like it's like like what you said about Kerry's parents. I don't think they would deter him if you know because he's actually making money and you're as, you're as, not. And it speaks to independence as well to show that you have right. a club in independence. Yeah. Yes, of course, of course. So um, I was making money as a DJ from about 16 years old, but um, my parents never really they never really saw the longevity in it. They, <laughs> I remember the first time I went to Japan, my mother's like, where are you going? I like, I'm going to Japan. She's like, why? I was like, to play music. She's like, they paying you? And I looked, that's when I looked in the eyes and I, I never, I never really looked my parents in the eyes, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. I looked her right in the eyes, I said, yes, yes. they are. Yeah. Yes, they are. Yes, they're paying me. And I didn't know then and there, but my mother went to work and said, you know, my son is going to Japan. Yeah. You know, and I didn't because, you know, you want to make your parents feel proud because I shed tears. I shed tears in front of my parents. My father told me I should join the Navy. And, and, I, and I filled out the application. I was 16 years old, about to graduate. I filled out the application. I took the test. The recruiters calling me down. Come down, come down. We ready for you. I took the test. Right. My guidance counselor, I forget her name. I don't even know if she's still alive because she was up there in age back then. God, yo, yo, she told me one of the realest things somebody ever told me. She told me, Kevin, you want to do this as a career? I said, no, I just, you know, I don't want, they said they're going to pay for school. Yeah. And, you know, you do your years. She said, listen, she said, listen, if you go to the military, no disrespect to anybody in the military. That's not my path. I'm not, I'm not, you know, we, we need you guys. So anybody in the military, I'm not, you know, saying this is what, that wasn't my path. Um, she said, if you're not willing to dedicate your life to something, don't do it. Yeah. She said, you're not really willing to dedicate your life to that. Don't do it. And I ignored the recruiter and I went to Hunter College, went to Hunter College. And that's when I got into the radio station. Right. 16 years old. I didn't know nothing about radio. I didn't know nothing about nothing. I just knew I just knew I liked music and right. I like and I like I like the attention. Right. I like the I like the attention. Mm. I like I, I liked it. You know, you know? So it um that 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 stuck with me. Now with the nine to five, somebody my first day on the job as an electrician. My first day on the job, I came with khakis, a nice little golf shirt. I thought I was gonna be tuning up transistor radios and stuff. It was construction, hardcore construction, cold steel, galvanized pipe. They said, right. kid, go lift, go lift this up. And I said, what? And, you know, I did it. I did it. And, you know, my first day, my first day on the job, my first shop I was ever in, I got fired after two weeks. Wow. <laughs> I got, but it was a union, so they sent me right back out. Yeah. You know, I, I made a mistake. 
and you know there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of things as far as um you know racial things and you know prejudice you know in the workforce and that's pretty much everywhere you go i'm not going to dwell in it too much but it they made it very hard for me i didn't have any family in the business and they knew that they used to ask me you have any family in the business and i didn't know why they didn't they 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 asked me these things because they they was going to they was going to make it very hard for me and if i had an uncle or a father in the business they couldn't really do that but that, i didn't know that and it's so funny because the the point you raised about your parents and so Shireen saying about um your parents actually just want to be proud to see you become i guess the best version of yourself yes but i also think for a lot of that generation of parents even some now they've never looked at DJing and creative industries as extremely professional um, mm. careers where you mm. can actually go on, make money, um, be able to, to have a family, to be able to do something that will make a difference, not just um, for your family, but in your community, in your country. Because again, you um, represent for the island where you're from and your parents are from, from Grenada. When yes. I go to anywhere, I represent from where I come from, Trinidad and Tobago. And right. again, I think now that especially with soca music being able to take off in the way that it has, a lot of that generation is now starting to accept the fact that guys like you, myself, and some of the other DJs that have been doing this are now actually going forward towards, if you want to call it, um, our purpose and where to yeah. do to affect other people, you know? Now, now I, I've, I've, like, I'm, I'm getting chills as you say this. I think I'm doing exactly what God intended me to do. Right. Um, and, but I had to go through that journey. I had to, I had to go through, um, another, another major part of this whole, this whole thing from my parents to me to not quitting was 10 years ago, April 20th, Mark, the day, 10 years ago, I got stabbed in my arm. Right. You guys right. can see that. Right. Yeah. Right. I got stabbed and I was disabled for a year and a half. I was already traveling. I was already DJing. I had to do it with one arm. Right. And, and because of that, every, every morning, I would try to move my thumb. My radial nerve was completely severed. My radial nerve, it's, it's in charge of opening your hands and moving your thumbs. Right. It's, a different, it's a different nerve that closes your hand. Right. It's a, right? So this, my posture on my hand was this. This feels normal to me because it was like this for a year and a half. Right. This feels normal to me. So every day I would try to move my thumb, right? And it wouldn't work, right? That's why if anybody ever sees me DJ, I DJ on one hand, not because of, you know, um, it's, 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 um, it's cool or it's quicker, it's because that's what I had to do. Right. I, could only really, I could only really work the crossfader with this hand. So basically it's, still, like muscle, it's like muscle memory now to trade. Yeah, I, 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 still, I still have nerve damage in this hand. It's not, this, this hand is never going to move like this hand. Wow. It's never going to do it. It's never going to like the things I could do with this hand. I cannot do it. Right. I can't, I can't. So all those, those scratches, I can, I can't, I can't really work the fader. And you know, I've, 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 I've accepted that. I've, I when the day my thumb moved, I got up and I went back to my dojang. Dojang is dojo, but it's Korean. I take Taekwondo. I'm a third degree black belt. I'm actually supposed to test for my fourth degree black belt. I was supposed to test this month. Damn. But, um, you know, yeah, so for my fourth degree black belt. So I went back 10 years ago to the dojo. Since then, I've won grand championships. I've competed. I've taken 14 to 15 black belt tests. I've got so many trophies. I've trained people. I've trained kids. I've trained my daughter. She's 12. She's a, she's a I don't know first or second, but she's, she's a black belt. And my youngest daughter looks like she's ready to go anytime she's turning three tomorrow actually and right. she looked like she's she's ready to go right my parents the reason i got stabbed is because somebody stole dj equipment out of my truck and i try to get it back right i try to get it back the diplomatic way now in the streets looking back i made a mistake i shouldn't have went at it the diplomatic way either i should have left it alone or i should have went at it the street way right you know what i'm saying but if i would went at the, the street way maybe i would have got locked up or so it maybe it was. Or, or you could have been dead, which could. Which or I could have been dead. Exactly. The, 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 the thing about this now, I found a guy who stole my stuff. Right. We walking downstairs. We get out the building. It's the corridor where the door is locked, and you go outside to the street. So that corridor, you got to ring that bell. That little narrow corridor, right? It's my boy over here. The guy 
in the middle and my back is turned. Some said, Kevin, turn around. Now, I had martial arts training, but I didn't get my black belt yet. Right. You know what I mean? I, I had stopped to go be an apprentice. Right. Because cause before the apprenticeship, I was in a tournament. I dislocated my toe. And I said, yo, you're dancing, you're DJing, you're working, you got to give up something. I gave up the Taekwondo. Right? I had a little bit of training. Something said, Kevin, turn around. When I turned around, I just saw him swing. So I blocked it. Blocked. Exactly. Yeah. I blocked it. I didn't know it was a knife until I felt a sharp pain and then I pulled it away. It's the biggest kitchen knife in the set. That's what he stabbed. He didn't slice me. It went in my arm, right? I had a leather jacket on and just out of instinct, you know, you see it in the movies. I took off my leather jacket and I wrapped my arm with it, right? right? I wrapped it and I tied it and I started, I saw red and I started cursing And I kicked him into my boy, and he 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 was on drugs. He was a he was a crackhead. He was on drugs. He was strong as hell. Don't ever fight a crackhead when they hot. He was strong. <laughs> he was strong as hell. So so he's he, he my boy got him, and I'm kicking him. I'm kicking him. I I I, I realized I, I found out after I broke his fingers. Um, all started started stuff started. I remember this like it's yesterday. Barber clippers was falling out of his pocket. All drugs, all type of shit was falling out of his pocket. So. I didn't feel no pain yet. I kicked him. I kicked him. My boy banged his head up against the wall. We heard bop, bop, splat. We heard bop, bop, splat. We dropped him on the ground. We called 911. I went to the hospital. They stitched me up, and I'm feeling good. I'm like, yeah, I got this guy. Then I'm here like, yo, doctor. Yo, I can't move my wrist or my thumb. He said, oh, you got nerve damage. You're going to have to have surgery tomorrow. Wow. Right, so some detectives came to the hospital that very night. I don't, I didn't know what I was in store for. They came to me. They checked my record. They realized who he was. Three guys straight out of a movie. The cops, the 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 the, 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 the not not the regular uniform cops. The cops in the suits comes to me and says, "Yo, you should have killed him. You should have took that knife up and you should have killed him." I said, "What?" Yeah. I I said I didn't I didn't understand what he did to me. Right. I didn't even understand when the cast was on me. It was a month later when they took the cast off and they told me I have this on video. I don't know why I videoed it, but I still have it on video. They told me, take the cast off. And I tried. I took the cast off. My arm was I never see. I was like, whose arm is this? It was it was ridiculously small. It couldn't straighten. And they told me to move my hand and I couldn't move anything. I couldn't move. And yo, I cried like a baby. Right. And for and and that was the one of the worst feelings I ever had of helplessness. I I, I like I I was I, I but and I was like, and he told me he said Kevin, no drinking, no smoking because that impedes the process of your nerve growing back. And right. he said I don't know how much I don't know how much you're gonna get back. He said I don't know how much you're gonna get back. That's what he told me. So he said, take your therapy seriously. No drinking, no smoking. That's something I really didn't, didn't do. But now a lot of people don't know why I don't really drink and smoke. That was the initial reason why I didn't do it. You know what so, I mean? So, At so, all. So, so essentially, it can be said then that going through all these experiences has yes. kind of been the catalyst for you to have that mantra that you are yes. you are your biggest um, opposition. You are the one yes. that you are, the, you are your biggest competition. Because yes. going through these challenges, that is how you've been able to come out on the other side and still, as you rightfully said, been able to evolve and to com continue and in you innovate yourself to be the better version of yourself every single right. day. Correct? That was, that's, that's like the backstory of, um, you know, just, 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 just my perseverance and just me being able to um, come, in, come, in, come into the, the soca genre, not being from a soca background. Just, you know, having the knowledge but not never being on those events, never being on those stages, just me going through all that and me being who I am. Yo, Kevin, you got to study. Yo, you're going to St. Vincent. You got to study. Kevin, you're going to St. Lucia. You got to study. study. People, people don't realize, like, Vince, St. Vincent music is... I, I love St. Vincent music because St. Vincent music is similar to Grenada. Yes, it is. I caught on, I caught on to the, the Vinci vibes right away. But you see, like, even in Barbados, for a long time, Barbados music was mainstream in soca. So right. it wasn't that hard. It wasn't that hard. Learning the bashment, you had to learn the bashment. 
But you see St. Lucia music? <laughs> I know that's what I said. I know that's what I said. Yeah. I literally had to sit down and call people, what is this song saying? Yeah. I don't speak Creole. What yeah. is this song saying? Because I don't know what I want to say. When I, I want to know, when I talk about what I, I people are like, what is he talking about? Yeah. yeah. Right? So I, St. Lucia, I literally spent 12 hours of a day redoing my cue points because I mix my, all my cue points have a consistency. But that actually, goes with me. Actually, what that thought? Because I want okay. to get, get okay. three questions before I pass next. Okay. Have, all right. You have nine minutes to answer these three questions. Okay. Because all right. Let's go. Let's if go. I don't ask it, my phone yeah. ring and I go and say, Shamari, okay. you didn't ask all the questions. All right. So the cool. first one, um, I had a friend tell me today that she saw you at Uber Soka Cruise. Yes. And she wanted to see this. Let me get, let me get the proper question here, right? Um, mm. She saw you at Uber Soka Cruise. And it kind of ties into a question I was going to ask. You and mm. me have something like where we are both DJs and announcers. Yes. Um, which one do you rather? Do you rather being the DJ or do you rather being the announcer? And how do you come up with the amount of energy that you have to sustain you for both performances? Listen, I listen. There, there are certain DJs that I work with that it makes my job so, so easy. Um, I think probably everybody knows the combination of Kevin Crown and DJ Private Ryan. Private Ryan, yeah. Private Ryan, um, pri working with Private Ryan has made me exponentially better than what I was because coming from the background where you would give a specific argument for a specific song. Right. And you had to know the song. You had to know when to mix it. You had to tell the guy when to mix it. You don't have to Work do that. On. Yeah. You, you don't have, have you don't have I I've been on, on, on stages with Private Ryan for two and a half hours, two and forty five minutes, and I didn't know what song was coming next unless we had a certain pocket of routines that we did would be would be like two minutes where I know what's coming next. But a lot of times it was he would give me a little hint. Oh, I just, I would just connect with the crowd. Yeah. And that for me, I do that. I do that. I do that with me. But with me, it's like, I know what I'm playing. I know my timing. I know where I'm trying to do. I know what I'm trying to get. So with me, it's, it's, I've been there. I've been doing that forever. Right. But working with an MC where you're not running back to the laptop, you're not right. even looking. You're saying, if you're like, yo, low, everybody low. And you're just like this, right? And you're like, one, Two, having that trust that you know he knows when the one, two, and the one, two, three, that can happen anytime I want. Right. But he, he knows that he has that four bar and that two bar punch. So, 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 that. so then you would say that um, you love DJing and I you love the DJ, but at the same point in time, if you're working with the right DJ, yes. announcing is something that, or being that mm. mic person, that high person, is something that you're attached to. Because I I I I don't want to say I don't want to I I'm 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 known for my energy and I'm known for for my mic presence. I'm very animated. I have a a, a sense of humor, a little weird sometimes. But you know, yeah, I remember, um, I remember the Bruce Lee outfit for for right, Star right, right. So yeah. right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. right. So yeah. so I I'm known for that. I love DJing, but um, I've been I've been. Since I'm 12 years old, a lot of people don't don't know that because they they see me as such a good MC. They get they they it's like their heads explode yeah. when they like, yo, why why is he playing? And then exactly. if I don't talk, if I don't talk, they say, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Why you're not talking? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I was like, I can't just play. That's why you know in this pandemic, me going on radio five days a week, sometimes six. Well, well, radio. We mean Instagram, Instagram live. Instagram, right? Me, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Me going on Instagram Live has really shown a lot of people that, you know, I am really, a, 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 you know, pound for pound, open format, put any genre in front of me, I'm going to knock it out the park. And, DJ. And, and that's something uh, at, the, at the next half hour past now, which is one okay. of the first things I want to talk to you about. The second question, quick, because I see okay. 925 here. Okay. Um, in terms of your Serato crate management, um, okay. because you're a DJ and announcer, and again, there's mm -hmm. something that both of us share. We have to be able to organize our crates in a particular way where we could find things easily, especially when it is that we want to give a full state performance plus yes. be on a microphone. Um, right. 
What is your thought process into um, create management for Serato? Do you have one, or is it still an evolving process? No, no, no. I have it down. I have it down pat. Right. I've been using. I've been. I've been using Serato since 2007. I was one of the first DJs in New York City to use Serato. Right. The, the, I, I'll give you the first person I saw. His name is DJ Spinfo. Right. right. After DJ Spinfo, it was Steely Bashment, DJ Magic, and Kevin Crown. Right. Those are the four in New York. 2007. I started using it, and it took me three years to be comfortable enough to leave my CDs at home. Right. It took me three, three years. Right. So in, in that time, you know, the, 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 the crate management, because I was already managing my music with real right, crates. Records, right. Then burning the CDs, but with the thing with CDs, CDs were annoying because when a new song came out that went with an old juggling, you had to reburn a CD. Right. Because remember some of those CD trays had bad loading time. And I'm, I'm, I'm a momentum selector, so I like to mix on timing. If we're doing um, ver, um, chorus to chorus, no verse, that's what we're doing. J juggling dance all is quick. Right. Argument, mix, right. So I used to burn the CDs, and it was, I, I spent so much time burning CDs. So when it came to crate management, I already knew how to place the crates. And the best thing about it, when you was done, you had to clean them up, and you just had to close your laptop, so, so, and you so, was good. So, so how often do you actually go into Serato to kind of fill up with crates again it's an important question because uh, i realize uh, a lot of young DJs every, keep asking this every i i i go every time i'm on a plane every time i'm on a plane it's time to make a new set right every time i'm in my hotel room it's time to make a new set sometimes i've made sets where we're on stage and everybody's killing it because a lot of young djs need to understand in in our world, there there are no shit DJs. Excuse my language. That's in my world, in my in our world, when you get to this league, this is the NBA. Me, Chamari, Ryan, Chow, Rigo, um, Selector Kerry, um, Ryan Saeed, we could Puffy, we could go on and on. There are no DJs. Those DJs are on the bench. When it's go time, it's like an all-star game. And if somebody's busting a place, you're like, okay. Okay, that's what you're doing. It's not a competition. <laughs> it's not a competition, but we like, yo, boy, you hear that remix? You hear that loop? You yeah. hear that? One thing, one thing I gotta read about Selector Selector Carry, Selector Carry and his wordplay and his storytelling with the way he mixes. Yeah. Oh my God, I'd be lying if I said I never stole a Selector Carry mix, but right. so it go, so it go, right? Um, you gotta prepare and you gotta be humble enough to understand that, yo. Your whatever's in your laptop may not be good enough. You better come better. Because if you come with that same normal thing, you might flop. Said, All right, so we're back with Kevin. Um, we're back. Question, two questions I want to get to quickly that were okay. asked to me today. One is from uh, Ron Oman who asks, how do you respond to criticisms of your performances? And the second one, um, which was from DJ Adu, um, have you ever considered entering the Red Bull freestyle competition? Um, okay, to, to, uh, number one, how do I respond to criticism? Um, of your performances, yeah. Well, I mean, eh, everybody has the right to their opinion, but as a DJ, we go off of um, the majority, right? So if I'm in a, in a, in a party and a 1,000 people are there, and 950 of them loved what I did, and 50 of them didn't, I did my job. Right. You understand? Um, criticisms could come from a whole bunch of other things. Criti Correct. Criticisms could, could come simply because they don't like you, because they, they have a certain perception, perception of you, right. because of a personality you might give off. For example, I, I've heard this so many times. Kevin, you are so not like how I thought you was. How did you think? How did you think I was? I thought you was cocky as hell. Why? And then they like, because in your head, you like because he's this way, he she's probably cocky. When in in all honesty, you just get to know the person. You know what I mean? I, I've been through a I've been through a lot. I've been through I've I've seen, I've seen, the the biggest artists, at their highest point at their lowest point. I've seen artists where you would think they cake in, and I'm not going to call no names. I've seen artists where you think they got money in the bank and they can't even get money to give their, 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 their kids something to eat. For real? 
and it, and 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 I know the reality reality of it. And Kevin, and what you see is what you get. And sometimes you don't even see everything because I'm not I'm I you you you've never seen me me um, post my car on social media. And you know I I I it, it's not it's 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 I'm not saying you know I'm not dissing anybody who does, but. I I I I have a, a certain past that keeps me paranoid about certain things. I know so, you know you know it's funny about that. Um, I remember I think it was last year, mm. and just going back to the story that you gave um, back in twenty ten when you were stabbed. Right. Last year you came to Vinci Mas, I think with a broken leg. Twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen. You had a broken leg. I, I, had, a, I had I had knee surgery. It wasn't broken. It, had it was a knee surgery. I had knee and, surgery. And, yes. And, and I say I bring up that story because again, a lot of times people see what we do. Yes. And they have a particular perception of it, but plenty of people don't understand the challenges that we have to go through to get to the point of where we are at. And as such, for people to sometimes say, well, you know, well, you might be cocky or you might be whatever, but they don't really understand your story. That's right. why at the beginning of every life, I make sure I try to get the exact government name as right. we say in the curtain right. Right. for everybody who we talk to. Because Kevin Crown has a story. Reddy McShamari has a story. Everybody yeah. who's on your life has a story. Right. And one of the powerful things about this COVID-19 situation is that we could use this now to positively reach out to people with our individual stories and hopefully give them hope into something that they want to do. So right. you're, you're very right that in terms of, you know, um, sometimes the criticism may not necessarily come from a good place. Right, right. Just, I guess it's just for you to kind of figure out if it's either that or not, correct? I mean, I mean, I mean at the end of the day, you, there's constructive criticism and there's destructive criticism. Correct. Right. So um, sometimes, you know, you 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 take you take it for as word as word as word. For example, um, you know, like I said, I, I do grassroots Caribbean events, but sometimes you do urban events with a Caribbean component. Right. Right. But you'll have hardcore Caribbean people in 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 the event. Mm -hmm. Right. So they'll see me in a St. Vincent or Grenada or Soka Brainwash. They'll see me going hard, job, denry. When I go into the urban event with a Caribbean component, I go more commercial. Why? Yeah. Because the majority of those people are not receptive to people throwing water on them or yeah. people <laughs> running yeah, up yeah. and down. Yeah, but, yeah. And, and, I, and, I, and I also have a love for those type of music. I have a great love for r and I have a great love for 80s music, 90s music. I got a great love for disco. I got a great love for pop music that in those settings, I show that side of Kevin Crown and 95% of those people love it. But then some of the hardcore Caribbean say, yo, nah, you making sense. Yeah. He, he, he ain't thing, but he, he he, often, you, yeah. you, you ain't looking at the rest of the crowd. They are loving what I'm doing. You may be not knowing it, but you got to understand the event that you're at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Depending on the event, you may, you, it's the Kevin Crown you're going to get. You know what I mean? I, I, let, me, let me get to the three-star question. Okay. Um, would Kevin Crown ever consider taking part in Red Bull Freestyle? That, that is actually one of my goals, but I also understand, I, all, I also understand that, um, that uh, that takes a lot of pre preparation. Uh -huh. and. And and if I go to the Red Bull the Red Bull Freestyle, I want to win. Yeah, I I want to win. I just don't want to go to say I did it. I'm trying to win. And to make a 15 minute set, I heard takes about eight months, or sometimes longer, depending. So, I, so sometimes when we, had, when we had the discussion with Puffy, when we had the discussion with Just J, right? It, it it is it is it is right. And I have the tools. I have the studio to 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 do it. But um um. That's definitely on my radar, but um, a lot of a lot of my immediate goals as far as achieving my fourth degree black belt, as far as 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 trying to, uh, to achieve close as perfection when it comes to streaming as possible, um, and just um, you know, just just being an all around DJ. But um, I, I have uh, I did attend the Scratch Academy. Um, I'm still I'm still learning. I'm not. I want I want to say I'm the I'm a I'm the best turntablist in the world, but when, where I was before I went to the Scratch Academy to now, I'm proud of where I'm at. You know right, what so, I mean? So, so in addition to that, I uh, just want to let everybody know once more, um, if you have any questions anyone asks, just click the question mark button at the bottom, type your comment, 
we will try very hard to get all the questions right. um, out of the way. We're trying to finish this by 10. So right. I'll send your questions quickly. Back to the right. next question I wanted to ask you. Right. Everybody, mm. I know, let's be like, mm. yo, Kevin Crown Studio Dome. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you yeah. mentioned just now about taking money and buying equipment. We all yeah. understand the challenge of equipment being, um, or building that, that amount of equipment because a lot. Um, how long did it take you to build your studio? And for any young person who may be cash trapped, especially now given what is happening uh, with COVID-19, what are some tips that you could give them to be able to, 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 to go towards having a studio like that? So All right. So, take it to build a studio and, and, um, and yeah. Okay, so this studio right here, I... I grew up in this house. This is uh, the house I grew up um, when I got a right. chance to when I got a chance to purchase it. Um, I did. Um, when I when 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 I grew up here, I I dedicated a space for DJing. It right. was just white. It was white walls, right. and you know the 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 normal setup. Now I'll I'll I'll, I'll give I'll, I'll show you guys some insight. I'll show you guys I'll, I'll show you guys something real quick. Oh, uh, this is gonna be good. <laughs> right. So, this was my studio look like. It, it, it looked very mobile DJ ish. Right. It looked ve very mobile DJ ish. The cow zones and all that. Right? right. I didn't want that look for my studio anymore. Right. And and I back didn't want the what? Back to basics is a space shuttle. <laughs> now, nah, bigger basics. Basics been in the space shuttle like basics. I see, basics. I saw him. He did a Basics live from been the space shuttle a couple of weeks right. ago. I saw him. I right. saw him. <laughs> so, so the, the, when I when I when I when I moved back here, the first thing I said is, "Yo, these white walls gotta go." Right. And I I, I chose a color. Right. Right. This was this was so the, the the initial space was always there for me to learn. This is why I I learned. This is why I practice. This is when where I used to act like I'm DJing in front of 500 people with right. nobody there. This is when I used to talk to people who were, who were never, yo, you bought it, yo, yo, you, you this, yo, go ahead. And my mother would just look and shake her head. <laughs> she would literally shake her head. What are you doing? Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm visualizing, right? So I got rid of the, uh, the white walls and I chose this color. Right. I, I chose royal blue and... The next thing I did, I, I didn't want the mobile DJ look. So I, I Googled. I did a lot of, a lot of Googling. Googling is your friend. So I two, do. Two, th two things I said that we want everybody to keep in mind. One, for individuals that are practicing, if you're in your home, that is your space. Yes. You practice like if you practice it in front of 2,000 people. Yes, Cause exactly. Because until you get that break to go out and perform, that is right. your safe space. That is your zone. And the second right. thing is, which is something really important that you put in the research for all the equipment that you bought. Every recently. single, every single thing I bought. Um, let's 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 get some light over here, right? So, the first thing I did, I, I googled DJ furniture, right? I do, I googled DJ furniture. This this table comes from Denmark. It was custom made, custom made from Denmark. The, right. the acrylic the acrylic pieces that hold up the CDJs, right. that hold up the laptop. Right. Is all is all custom made. The next thing I wanted to do, I grew up playing vinyl, so I invested in a pair of turntables. A pair of turntables. Now, I it's just something about me. I, I went out and got the limited edition ones, right? right. So th this is number six oh one, right? Of a thousand, right? right. Number six oh one of a thousand. If you could still see this mixer, this this S nine is number one oh six, one oh eight of five hundred. Right. Right. So there's only 500 of these, right? right. I think this turntable is 104. Right. Um, just because it came out, I invested in the Rain 78 and the Rain 12. Right. Uh, I also have an SRT 1000 because I got tired of lifting this one out of my house. I, so I, have I get a, that same thing with me. Right. So um, then, you know, it's just, you know, I invested in, in good speakers because I wanted to know my music was sounding good. Because some right. people use, some people use, um, Speakers that they play, like they'll use like a, 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 a subwoofer or something that they play parties with in their house. I used right. to do that. Then I said, no, you got to get, you got to get studio speakers. Um, um, naturally, you know, I had, I had a mixing board and because I did radio and I got an opportunity to do radio in my house, I, I wanted to do radio the right way. 
So I, I, I did my research on the industry standard. The industry standard is a 7B. This right. is a um this is a short seven B. A lot of people go, right. so this is this is phantom powered. So don't think you're gonna plug plug this up to your S nine and think it's gonna work. You need a mixer with phantom power. Phantom power, yeah. Also with the seven B, you need phantom power, but you also need this. You need something what's called a cloud. Right. Right? You need a cloud. That's an amplifier for the microphone. After that, it's picking up everything in the room. Um when so I when so, so in total, how long did it take you to actually build uh, that studio? This this studio because I don't want I don't want anybody to feel that it was an yeah. overnight something that you just went about to about uh, about about four years right about about four years but in the past month it's been in the past six weeks there were certain additions added to it um I had to add this screen um the IMAC came um. The, um, I re I just rearranged. This is the phone line. Um, I have a phone line. I know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have a phone line. This this right here, the fat two. This is what helps me connect the phone to the speaker, so I could talk through the microphone. Right. That's my my video switchers. So when I'm switching my cam camera angles, I'm doing my video switchers. Now, if um anybody oh my iPads that I would have showed you the app that controls it because because when I'm in the studio. You'll see, you'll see, they call it a spaceship because everything is at the controls, right? Right. So I, I have my tablet that I watch my comments. I have my screen. I watch the, 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 um, the feed. This controls my video switcher. And then, of course, you know, you have the music. That's why it's very important that your music is organized, right? Because right. nobody wants to watch a DJ on live. Nobody wants to watch a DJ in person like this. Yeah, correct. You don't want to. You don't want to keep your your head down in your laptop for too long. So it, it, to answer the question, it took me about four years, but this is still this is still evolving. I am ninety percent comfortable with what the studio is now. Right. I'm ninety. I'm ninety percent. Um, I was just a uh, shout out to my brother Links. I tell him I, I I joke all the time that I I want him in the studio because he's very anal and he would just clean up some of these wires right. and make it and make it give it more of a cleaner look. Right. But um, I'm I'm very I'm happy so far, uh, as the way the studio is. Also, if you notice about my studio, once you walk into it, it's branding. Right. It's branding. It's branding. This these things are very important to show me where I came from. It shows also shows the pro progression. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You have Superman. Um, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this was. All right. If you ever see my birthday party, right? When I when I have, when I do, I have to hear the story. I have to hear the story. <laughs> I've always I've always had a, had a um a vision of my birthday party as a literal movie, right? right? So shout out to um Links um Planet Links. I don't know if he's in the room, but he he's been my one of my designers for a long time, and then he moved on to videography. Now he does my videos. But um, this was the year after. I had my daughter and right. I, I used to keep my birthday party every year, but then I did it for one year for, so for many reasons, but I came back and it was Kevin crown returns. Right. Right. And that was, that was the only time with Superman returns as well too. Yes. Yes. Yep. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. So we re, we recreated the, f the, the flyer for that. Um, over here, you see a lot of, a lot of dope memories over here, over here. You, you guys will see, just this is just these are flyers I used to give out promo right. flyers for all your Always. events. Right. For, no, this is just this is just promoting my brand. This was just booking flyers that I would give right. out. Right. Um. This was this was a radio flyer I did when I was on ninety three point five FM. That was a tri state station. This is the 20, 2011 BP Records Green Sleeves Summer Sampler. To this date, I'm the only DJ who's ever had his picture on a VP Records sampler. Right. right. That's me a conscience. I did conscience first mixtape in New York City. Right. I, w I was the DJ that did that. Um, and just this is another creative fly that's probably one of the dopest flies. Versatility. You see us changing clothes through the fly. So, 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 so in, in essence, then, one of the things that I think everybody could take from this, which is mm -hmm. a discussion I had with um, Barry Hype, I think it was two weeks ago, is mm -hmm. that as, you, as everybody could see here, as much as it is that you built your studio, you took your time to build a studio, it happened in four years, 
Yes. So this is not overnight where Kevin just went and put out a set of money and a million dollars. No, 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 no. time, no. Seven, seven making priorities of what you wanted. Like probably as, as, as I said in an earlier um, chat, having a vision board saying this is what I want to do, this is what I want to accomplish. So that is one thing that's very important. And Shamari, I'm going to tell you what I did. I'm going to tell you exactly what I did. I'll tell you what I did. I got a credit card, right? I got a credit card and I said, I'm going to get a credit card with 18%, 0%, in, no, 18 months, 0% interest, no interest. So if I spent $3,000, I did, how much money did I have to spend oh, every oh. month Right. So, so, and it broke down to maybe one fifty, one sixty. Was it wasn't a lot. It was, you know, you you take some money from a gig and you put it towards a credit card bill. When right. I paid that off, I went and spent another lump sum of money. But it was right. over. It was over. I just use my credit. I just use what what the what the tools that are available to us. I it's use a, credit. It's a, it's a bit I, what lady like what lady Dre was saying to me, where she took a statistical approach to the business and say, okay. Mm. If I, I have to make back this amount of money to, to, to pay back this, then yes. this is probably where my income comes from. Instead right. of taking that gig money and going and buying a pair of Jordans or whatever, no. let me use no. that to, to pay back the loans and then save back that money so I can reinvest, reinvest it back in that's, business. That, that's and that's really important. That's, that's really 100% correct. And, and it wasn't, this, this studio was collecting dust for three years. Right. The, the only time I came in here was to do a mix. Right. I, I when when Instagram Live first you know at, gave gave us the live service, I had to show Instagram Live. A lot of DJs are going live for the first time. I was going live two, three years ago. I was going I live and I had a so so what that thought, which is like the last two questions I want to get into mm. before you run out of time. One okay. of the things that as I told you when I spoke to you, which I've been really impressed with you about, is the consistency and the quality of your Instagram live and streaming platform, right? Because as mm. we all know, in COVID-19 or covid getting, as we like to say, at this mm. point in time, everybody's home. And yes. now people are doing their Instagram lives, they're putting on the camera, they're doing the thing, whatever. But yours is totally different. And to the mm. point where you are now doing a full-fledged morning show on Instagram, and yes. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that you have other platforms as well that you stream to. Um, yeah. So just speak quickly to the DJs in terms of how much research you had to put into to doing that. And just like how your room is set up that way, how mm -hmm. important is presentation of what you're doing to actually put in all the content? All right. So um, you got to always understand as there's much people as know you, they could at any given time, there's somebody could, could stumble upon you and see something in you that could change your life. Right. Somebody, a, a, a record exec, an artist, a millionaire, uh, somebody just believes in you, right? When you're presenting yourself to the world, when you press that live button, you are opening up yourself to the entire world. It's like going outside your house. You wouldn't go outside your house with, 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 with ketchup on your shirt without your, you know, when we, when we used to get haircuts, you know, you would present... <laughs> You trust know, me, to trust go, me. It's it. right trust me, trust me. to go outside you would present yourself but i find and this is no shade this is just real talk this is frank frankly speaking i find djs are irresponsible when they press that live button yeah. you know they 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 they're very irresponsible their 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 audio is not correct their surroundings are not correct they don't look correct themselves and sometimes there's somebody that could have hold held you in a high regard Yo, I like this guy. He's, and then when they see you in your live, it brings you them back down to reality. Like, this guy is, this guy is not who I thought he was. And it's Just to, based and it's then to say that when you're doing a live, and that's something we want to stress to all DJs. Right. It's not a say that your life has to be the spaceship like Kevin. Curry. No, 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 so not at all. That, okay. but, no, not, but no, not at all. But there's a guy who I know, and I, I'm, I'm not calling names because it's not about shade, it's about right, right. shared information. Right. He, he does his lives. I've seen at times he's like in his living room and he's seeing his dog on the couch. Right. And he's seeing, you know, he's seeing food on the table. And, right. and a lot of stuff is going on. And as right. much as you want to listen to the content, because that's why you want people to tune in, your right. surroundings are not matching with your audio 
for you to right. have a holistically good experience with the person. Exactly. Yeah. I would I would say at the very least, if your surroundings are not good, choose the option where you throw up a flyer, right. throw, yeah. up your, throw up your logo, and let your music talk. Right. Right now, I do see a lot of DJs um re utilizing the streaming to Instagram, but um again, you could have the pretty logo on top, you could have the pretty logo on bottom, but in the middle. Put on some. I knew I was going live, so I went in my closet yeah. and I put on some clothes. Put on some clothes, yeah, yeah. I put on. I put on some clothes. And, and, wear, I, and if you can wear branded stuff, you understand? Wear, 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 stuff. wear, wear your stuff. Also, yeah. also, if you look in the studio, there's lights. I'm a blind some people. There's lights all over my studio. There's lights everywhere, all over my studio. There's there's right. lights. Invest in lights. Invest in lights. And again, Invest it doesn't have to be it, it doesn't have to be expensive stuff, right? Get just, uh, get get uh, you could get one of those drop lights. Yeah. Just light just light the area. You yeah. you I I'm going into these guys live and it's like, okay, you're trying something. If you are trying something, you go on Instagram, you make a new page with no followers. Exactly. You make a make a new page, make a test page, whatever you're trying out, do it on the test page, right? right. When and you that, present that way the research that you're doing, because right. again, we want to appeal to everybody who is of all financial backgrounds. Yes. So even if it is that you don't have the money to go live, and as I say, you're not in the space shuttle like Kevin Crown. Right. You don't need that. Time, you could sit down and say, okay, I'm going to take the advice from this session and actually go and do the research. How do I probably create an image with my logo? Right. Um, what right. can I do, even if I don't have the right jacks? To hook up my laptop to my phone or whatever to get proper audio how can i position my phone better so that i could actually get better sounding audio to somebody that comes on so that even if you have right. two followers or ten followers that are going to tune into your live at least there is some particular level of professionalism and the presentation has improved so that people will take you a little bit more seriously because it's about building the content over a particular period of time correct Defi de definitely. If you look at um the way my morning show looked the first day now, to, 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 now, to listen, today, <laughs> I I, I tuned in twice to the morning show when I got chances. Like, but this are right. full. Like, this is full production here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I could actually show you guys um some of the layouts of how I'm how I'm doing everything. Um, why, why are you looking for that? I, I have it. It's why, there. Why, it's right, there. Quick. Let me see. Go quick. ahead. Let go ahead. Quick. Go ahead. Right? Because I want to get to that final question, which I think is the most important one for a lot of people right now. Okay. Right? And this is stuff that you Googled and researched to, to, to do yeah, yourself, oh yeah. right? All, all, everything right here is product of, this is what you guys see on Instagram, right? Um, let's, this is something I made on Saturday. I was just messing around in two minutes, I made it, right? So this right. is what you guys will see on Instagram. When it transforms, I hit a button. Bomb, it transforms. Boom, right. I hit another one, it'll transform again. Bomb, right. right, right. I have, I have, I, and these are all things I've made on my own. It's very simple to do. DJs, you can hit me up. I can give you a tutorial on it. But, um, this is, um, none, none of, none of those programs. All right. All right. None right. of those programs cost any money. Well, look yeah, at that. Right. So, so, so that's also a key point we want to make to all the DJs that a lot of what you're doing is based on research. Yes. Some of what you have done is not costing money to do. It's just putting in time to yes. research where it is that you want to accomplish, right? A lot of, a lot of sleepless nights. A lot of sleep. A lot of, sometimes I would do the morning show. Something would go wrong, and I would literally research it until the next morning show. The only thing I would do is take a shower. For some reason, when I am go live, I got to take a shower. I got to put on clothes like I feel like I'm doing an event. You know what I'm saying? Even though I'm in my house, my, my, my family's like, yo, where you going? I'm like, I'm going to do live. No, right, because even here, um, when we have our daily press briefings, um, right. where they update us with the coronavirus, they've been doing all their press, um, press, press conferences via Zoom. Right. And sometimes we see some of these professional reporters from right. news stations come on the camera and it's like they're in the house. Right. They're not even dressed for the interview. And you're right, on national no. TV. And no. people started to make them out on social media. 
Right. So now you're starting to see these reporters actually coming properly dressed to, the, to. the press conference. And that is something, again, we want to stress that, yes, the technical skill is important, but we also want people to remember presentation to, is, is also as important. And you have to put that time into it. I want to get yeah. this question quickly because okay. it's something I, I think Caribbean people are a little bit insulated to. Um, as I okay. said at the beginning of the live, we have 99 people that have recovered um, from the COVID-19, um, from being infected with COVID-19 in Trinidad. We had 116, okay. un unfortunately, we had eight deaths. Um, so we are at the point where almost everyone that is, has survived it um, is going to come out of it um, healthy, which is, we thank okay. God for that, right? Um, how do you see the coronavirus crisis impacting the event industry in the medium term and for a DJ now who probably is trying to figure out how to get himself out there, especially a young DJ, what could he do at this point in time to be able to put himself out there and market himself in a point in time where we have no events, we have no parties, we have no to go to? Well, right now is the age of the virtual event. Um, I, I, I want to say, I don't want to say I, I in, invented the industry, I, I will take uh, the credit of being one of the cultivators of the industry as one of the first DJs actually putting a flyer out and saying, I'm available for bookings for your virtual event. Right. You know what I'm saying? To, to, to understand that this booking is going to be some kind of monetary compensation from the event. Right. So now nowadays, there are virtual birthday parties. There are virtual carnivals. There are, there are, there, there are so many ways virtually to make money now is the time where you guys you guys got to develop your craft this is you know I, I like action movies you notice every part of every action movie where the, the the main character he's good he gets defeated and then he has to train and he has to get stronger and sometimes he falls down and he gets up then he falls down he gets up or he tries this move and he can't do it he tried this movie can't do it and then one day he gets it this is the time for conditioning and training and yeah. retraining of everybody. Yeah. Re rehab right now. If you want to be a DJ, you gotta go. Like you just they say, not shooting in the gym. You gotta get in the gym now. This is the time to get in the gym. You want to be a turntablist? Do your two hours a day doing those baby scratches and those transforms every day. You want to do something? We are product of you. You only get better at something by repetition. All right. So anything you want to get better at, do it every day. I'm good at this. I'm good at streaming on Instagram because I do it every day. Right. There's some day. There's some days where it don't go that well. You know what I'm saying? There's some days where it goes great. There's some days where I'm, I want to pull my freaking hair out. You know what I mean? And and this is with help. You know what I mean? But you you this is the time to train. What do you say, is, what do you what do you say that? And, and this is a question I wanted to get to, but I think I could tie it to this to save time. Okay. Would you say that your um, exploits in martial arts and also um, just as being a fitness trainer. So if anybody doesn't know, Kevin Crown is Mr. Fitness Trainer, right? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. An interesting story. Um, last year before I came to St. Vincent, I was traveling a lot at the point in time. And I remember hitting you up and saying, yo, Kevin, like, uh, I'm going from this place to that place to that place, right. having trouble putting together, like, small workouts. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, if yeah. I land in a country for a carnival, I either don't know what to do or I feel out of my comfort zone because I'm not in the gym or not in my right. And you were like, yo, if you're going to where you're going and there's a gym, these are the exercises that you can do. You don't have to stay two hours. You don't have to sit on there and live whole day. 45 minutes. Uh, this was the exact words. 45 minutes and boom, you're out. Because yes. you just want to keep in that, um, that, that momentum. But mm -hmm. that spoke to me that there's a particular level of discipline that goes into that. So yes. do you think that that discipline in your fitness training and martial arts has stretched straight into music as well, too? I think, I think it first started from um, seeing my parents and their work ethic. Right. It, sta it started there. Um, my father worked seven days a week. Right. Seven days a week up until he retired. Right. He, worked he worked seven days a week. Uh, my mother held multiple jobs at once. And my mother, when she came home, she used to help my father with his business. Right. You know, so it started there. But the martial arts, the martial arts is, is definitely something that, you know, when people say, I feel like Kevin Crown is so cocky. You, you guys don't understand. I walk into a building and I used to do this six days a week, two classes a day 
for a very long time where I would go in, I would bow, and everything out of my mouth, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, no, sir, thank you, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. I I, I think the, the entertainment and the martial arts is like my yin and my yang. Right. I've, I've been kicked in the face. I've been kicked in the ribs. I've had bruised, I've bruised, I have had bruised ribs. I've bruised ribs. I've had busted lips. I've busted lips. I never bust no eye. I never got a busted eye, but I busted some eyes. And this is people that I like. And what is it, what the, the, the aches and pains that I've gone through and the, the defeats and the triumphs have gone through is it, 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 it says that, yo, every day is not going to be a, a shiny day. And right with this COVID-19, um, I know a lot of people are dealing with anxiety. I'm dealing with anxiety as well. Don't I, I, and, and I, I feel I'm, 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 I, I think, I think I'm a tough guy. You know, I would like to think I'm a tough guy. But Yo, at the same time too, at least you're, at least you're, you're, you're good enough to admit, which is the same to me and like, yo, we share in here. So yeah. I, I go through the same thing as well too. And that's why when I had the conversation with Puffy and yeah. you we were talking about mental health, it's mm. okay to admit that not every time you're not okay. No, yes, no, yeah. no, not, not every, yo, there's, 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 there's certain times, uh, there was for a long time up, a, up until about the beginning of last week, there was certain times of the week where I, in my head was like, yo, I got this shit. Yeah. I got, I, I have it. I, the symptoms they talking about, I have it. And I was like, yo, I'm not getting sick. I would, I would literally do everything and anything, whatever they said to do. I got a blow dryer here somewhere that they said you could blow the blow dryer. I know, I know I got a blow dryer. I got a blow dryer around here Some I have a blow dryer around here somewhere. But I was, I, I, it, yo, the anxiety and then watching the news and seeing people die. And then, you know, on, you know, we had a death in the family. Um, my uncle passed away from, um, COVID-19, oh, um, like two, like, 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 yeah, thank you. Like three, three weeks ago. And my other, uh, my other uncle, his brother, he got it, but he recovered. Right. Um, and you know, just, just, he was, he was 70 years old. He had a lot of pre, pre-existing conditions. Um, just the fact that he spent the last two weeks of his life by himself, we couldn't go see him. My family's very big. My family's very big. The, the, we had to watch the the funeral on Zoom. It that that is probably one of the the, the things that I, I, I I'm I'm most upset about. And this is happening so t almost every day. So when we hear somebody passes away, we are numb to it. You know, it's it's, it's bad to say, but it wasn't like it wouldn't. It, you know, you last year if you don't heard somebody, die, oh my God! Now it's like wow, my condolences. And you move around, you move around your day. This thing is cheapening. You know, like, like, yeah, like it's, 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 it's something that, you know, um, I think when this is all said and done, we're all going to have to come together and say, yo, bro, we not all right. We need to talk to somebody because yeah. this, this thing is going to manifest itself in many different ways. Um, yeah. it's going to motivate some people. It's going to, it's going to depress some people, but I think what I like, I like to see everybody coming together and supporting each other. And, you know, just like, like, I probably wouldn't have time to do this if the the world was in a normal state because yeah. we would we we would we're be busy. yeah we busy so I think just I have a group of people that we speak to um, almost every day that we actually met on my morning show right and we there's there's times where this this group of people they stay in a conversation for 24 hours talking to each other from different right. di different parts of the world and I think that's I think that's pretty dope. And you know, they talk about all type of you know life changing issues. They talk about their fears. And I think this is this is a uh, something that is we never thought in a million years would happen. But now that it's happening, um, it's uh, it's gonna make everybody stronger. I I now, know as I said that um, one of the things I've been trying to do from since like 2017 is that I try to find the silver lining in every situation. Yeah. And you just said something that was extremely important. Um, for everybody who's probably been tuning into these lives, there are days when I have myself don't even feel like to do it because right. my brain and my emotions are always on edge sometimes. But right. the fact that we could have down to earth conversations like this, that has nothing to do with party, nothing no. to do with fair, because we covered all that and right. that is important. 
But yeah. at the end of the day, we are all human beings, and we're yeah. using this platform as well, not to just help younger DJs or even experienced DJs to give them advice on things that can make their careers better. But mm -hmm. at the same point in time, dealing with the humanistic side, where we are now all connected. And I think yeah. that is something that is probably going to be the most powerful thing to come out of this time. The fact that it took a global crisis for us to probably realize that we are more connected than we, than we thought we are. Yeah. Bro, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, that first FET, when I see all you guys, it's going to be, <laughs> it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be yeah, emotional. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, gonna, yeah. it's, it's, it's going to be emotional. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, going, it's going to be emotional. Like you said, people don't really understand. Like they, they, I know sometimes we appear larger than life. Um, but you know, we are, we are human beings. You yeah. understand? Yeah. We're, we're human beings. And I know for, for other people, you know, you know, don't, don't treat us like you see like, like, like horses racing or like, a uh, 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 like, 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 like a thing, like, like we're human. We are human, we are human. We are beings. Human. And, human. and when you, when you see a DJ, I'll give you an example. Rigo Suave. Rigo, I saw Rigo DJ for 13 hours. Yes. Yes. And yes. and it was it was Easter. Yeah. And and two things popped it popped into my head. I said, "Yo, bro, did you eat?" Yeah. I said, "Yo, bro, I'll I was texting, I'll send you whatever you want at Uber Eats." You know what I'm saying? Another thing that says, "Yo, you have kids, bro, and you're you're dedicating your 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 time to the people because he said, "This is what we would have been doing if the if if times were good." Yeah. And he dedicated his whole Easter Sunday to playing music for people on live. Yeah. And and I didn't even look at it though for what he was playing or the vibe. No, I we, just, just, I, we just wanted to make sure he was good. Because, yeah, I just I right. I just wanted to make sure he was good. Even with that, I um I sent Rigo a voice note a couple of days ago, which probably he, he listened to it, but he never responded. Which is it, right. it, 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 but to me it didn't matter. It was mm -hmm. just literally a message to say, bro. Um, I know around this time we always in Beckway or somewhere yeah. and yeah. I realize these days you're doing a lot of lives and I just want to let you know well keep good doing you do hope your family is safe and that was yeah. all and the yeah. main reason for that is because look even in this in these forums I'm able to see back to basics I saw Private Ryan I saw a couple of right. guys who I'm accustomed seeing but there are faces that I haven't been seeing and I am mm. not the type of person to just see those guys and say, well, yeah, he's just a DJ. But we are right. all people and we are all human beings. And I honestly think that this point in time is really time, as I always say, it's cliche to say, check in on your strong friends. But yeah. I think now more than ever is the most important. No, the, you, you never know what somebody's going through. And I've, I've, I've talked to DJs and, and they were in bad places. And I said, yo, listen, this is going to be all right. Yeah. And they say, what do, you, what do you mean? I was like, you not going live? They said, Kevin, I don't have nothing. I don't have no wires. And I said, and I, and I, and I said, yo, listen, come get this wire from me. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what to do. Yeah. Print shops are still open. You could print a banner. You could get a logo done. You could go live. And what happened is when they connected with people and it wasn't about the numbers. Yeah. It just, it, it was, just made them feel better. It, it made... Like it made them feel like they mattered because yeah. as D as DJs, we, we need to perform. We need that stage. Yeah. We need, we need that stage as much as the people need us. We need that. You know what I'm saying? And when that got taken away from us for, for I, I don't know, for a couple of days, I was in a bad spot because you know, I do this full time and I do it at a high level. And I had so many deposits and so many carnivals and so many gigs booked. Damn, yeah. I lost, thousands of dollars thousands of dollars right lost and and i and i saw it and i said oh my god what am i gonna do did i make the wrong decision leaving my nine to five and i said you know what i ain't going back i'm not going back and within a couple of days we came up with this streaming how are we gonna stream it how are we gonna structure it we're not just gonna jump on live we're gonna do shows we're going to do parties. Yeah. You know, and then I did that, that first Uber Soka. Um, Zoom party, yeah. Zoom, the Zoom party. And I realized there was 35,000 people on Facebook watching. Yeah. And Uber, Uber got 9,000 people to log in.
Yeah. And they all, they all saw us playing music. And I called up all my DJ friends and I said, it's going to be all right. Yeah. We're going we gonna to be good. Yeah. I called all of them. I said, we're going to be good. Yeah. And, I want, and I, want, I want everybody to actually take that message out from this live tonight. That, that is actually the most important message to take from this live tonight that we really will be good. We really we're going to be good. Um, we're going to be all right. Now, quickly, because yeah. I have 10 minutes here. So what okay. I have is I have a list of questions in the question box. I just okay. want to shoot it off one time. So the okay. first person wants to know, who is your favorite soca artist of all time? Quickly. Wow. Wow. I would have to say Marshall Montano. Marshall Montano. All right. Yeah, I, I, learned, I learned so much from, from watching Marshall perform. I would have to Next say Marshall. Next um, one. How many cameras do you actually use in your studio? Which is something I wanted to know. Four. Four. One, two, three. Four. Four. Uh, all right. Um, next one, quickly. Things that you think to look out for most in the music industry right now. Um, just look, just look out for the, uh, the, ad the adaptation of the situation. Look out for the adaptation of the situation. We have adapted. The music industry has it. Social media has not. But they are adapting. All right? Uh, I'll tell, I, I, I'll tell, I'll tell you, um, DJs, don't stop going live. Stop complaining about getting flagged. Keep the consistency. Yeah. Keep on the radar. Yeah. This, and these things. And innovate. And innovate. I think innovation inno is the most inno important inno right now. Innovation is the key. Yeah. All right. Look out for the look out for the adaptation of this situation. Yeah. Look, that's it. All right, Ned. Do you have a plan set, or do you play on the? <laughs> <laughs> I laugh at that because Laird and I had that discussion there. But do you have a plan set or do you play off the fly? I play off the fly. Right. I play I, I play off the fly. Normally, yo, it's so funny. In the morning show, there's probably I, I'll be honest with you, there's two sets that I planned out. Right. There was the four the four twenty set. Right. Where I played where I played an hour of marijuana tunes. Right. I planned that out. I, I put that together. And when I did the cartel set, I planned that out. Right, because right? I, I went through all my music. I, I couldn't I couldn't have freestyle that. But every other time I freestyle. All right. Um next person wants to know um how important is it for a DJ to be able to scratch can a DJ make it big um without I guess without being, being it's, it's it's not it's 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 not important at all. It's not yeah. important at all. It's yeah. not it's not important it's not it's not it's not important at all. That's like saying does a, a a basketball player need to be able to to do do trick dunks and dribble to be a good basketball player? No. Right. No. Let me take no, two more quickly. Um, how is your set different when you start a party to when you headline a party? That's a very important question. I like that. All right, starting a party. Starting a party is about setting the tone. Starting a party is about making sure everybody else is good. So as this first DJ, you got to make sure. The monitors are on, the turntables are working, the crossfade is working, the microphone is giving no feedback. You are literally there to tell the engineer, this is how we want it done. Also, yeah, I, you're, 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 you're set in the mood. You got to make it comfortable for people. You got to make it, you got to make people drink, right? This is a business. Everybody has to make money, yeah. all right? You got to be able to make it comfortable enough for people to drink. You don't want to, you don't want to cut the headline up, um, um, you don't want to cut his him at at, at, at the kneecaps. Yeah. You don't want to kneecap the headliner. Yeah. Because he's the headliner. And most important, yeah. most importantly, and you can attest to this as well. Mm. Every DJ should understand that at any the day there is no shame in being the first DJ. And no, I, I will. I will warm up any party. And I, I will warm up any party. I said that because my same friend who sent the question about Uber Soccer. The yeah. comment she made was that you were actually one of the DJs playing to greet people to the boat. Yeah. And she yes. was like, well, when I saw him on stage, I was like, well, wow, you're actually doing the greeting party too. And right, she never right. thought that you'd do something like that. But yo, sometimes the opening DJ is sometimes probably the best DJ for the night because as you say, he sets the tone, he sets right. the pace, he probably encouraged people to go and buy something to drink. Right, he gave right. that energy, that little pump of energy so that when whoever else comes on as the headliners, they are primed and ready for that guy. So the opening DJ is equally and sometimes more important than the headline DJ. That's it. But, but let me let me let me tell you something with this Uber, the Uber um opening. That's probably one of the biggest sets you could ever do. Because every passenger on the boat passes you and takes a picture of you yes. and puts it on their live. Yes. Yes. Everybody. Yeah. 
Yeah. So you go, you every time I do it, that's the second time me doing it. Well, I did it actually did it four times because it's two boats. Right, right. I go viral on Instagram when I do the greeting because so many people tag me and at me. But, and that's and that's a marketing that is part of marketing your brand as well. Uh, let me absolutely. take this this last one here. Um mm. thoughts on DJs who are refusing to do IG lives and switching to other platforms like Twitch. I think that, um, that, that to me has more to do with the copyright issues that people are running into. Um, listen, I am going to download Twitch and I'm going to see what it's about. At the end of the day, what's the best way for me to connect with people? Um, I'm planning on doing my show on multiple platforms. Something just came in today that right. allows, uh, that's going to allow me to send the same feed with a different measurement because my show is tailor-made for Instagram. For Instagram, right, yeah. Right, but if I, I'm gonna be able to get the same camera feed in another computer where I could tailor make it for something else. I see, so, I see Led from friends of friends wants to know what is Twitch. So, Led, if there's one thing we've learned from this live, is to do the research. So, we yeah, even that yes. to Led to go right. Google where is Twitch, right? Which is right, fine right. because because we right. already use Twitch in Trinidad that much, but at the same point in time. Do what do do they do and do the research? Right? We didn't know what Zoom we didn't know what Zoom was either. I, I right? knew what it was because of my office when we had meetings across campus. So yeah. I like yeah. I like I like Instagram because that's my strongest platform because that's what where I'm most active. Instagram right. is a is an imperfect platform to do it, what I do. It does. Because yeah. it's frustrating to see you have three hundred somebody people, the IG live ends and it starts back from one. From but one. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but you have to know how to keep those people coming back because I'm a, I'm a, um, I'm a radio broadcaster, not just a DJ. And there's, there's a difference between being a DJ and a broadcaster. And a broadcaster correct. Because, because I'm a broadcaster, I know how to structure my show to bring the people back. I know that, you know, although we play music, everybody has the same music and you got to give them people content, consistency. You got to give them a, 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 a safe, a safe uh, um, environment. You gotta give them. You gotta give them something to do. So and you have to, and I, you have to, and you have to connect with them more. So you have to connect. You have to connect. I, I, I'll give you a trick, um, DJs. If you want people to stay in your live longer, start a conversation in the chat. Yeah. St start a con. Play the music, but just start a conversation well, in the chat. Except, except if it's private, right now, because <laughs> yeah, 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 because, yeah, 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 yeah. Because private Ryan live on Saturday had like right. four hundred people. And right. then and after just, when he had the normal conversation, he had like about 500. Right, so right, right. I told him, I asked him if he was going to do um, soca brainwash legs and pegs. But yeah. he said, he's, he said he's not going to do soca brainwash legs and pegs. So, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I have one more question to ask you, which is going to go okay. back to how we started this conversation. It has nothing okay. to do with music. Very simple question. Now, mm. I've been taking the last dance for the last couple of days. Okay. I know you were somebody that wanted to be a baller. When Kevin mm. Crown was growing up, was he a Kobe Gr B Bryant guy or was he a Michael Jordan guy? And if Jordan in his prime was to play LeBron now, who would win? Um, one on one. I want to hear this answer. All right. I was a Jordan guy just because um, I'm, I'm a 90s guy. You know what I'm right. saying? And I, I'm, I'm also a Knicks fan. Right. Uh, uh, so... I, I, w I wasn't really a Jordan fan, but if I had to choose between Jordan and Kobe, I would cho I would choose Jordan. Right. I I do admire Kobe Bryant's work ethic, and Kobe Bryant reminds me of myself. Right. His his worth ethic and the way he he went about dealing with people in his field. I'm a Kobe Bryant. So so I'm, so right now you put Jordan 23 in his prime of the Bulls and right. LeBron. Probably in his prime of the Cavs or somewhere between Cavs and Mavs. Jo right? I, 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 I would one choose. One? I would choose Jordan. Thank you. <laughs> I would choose Jordan. The reason being, the reason being, Jordan played in the NBA when the NBA was MMA. It was NBA MMA Thank when you. it was <laughs> Jordan was getting elbowed. He was getting pushed. He was getting punched. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. Yo. It wasn't flops. It wasn't. It wasn't this. And there's a it wasn't this. No. no, 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 no. Also, 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 LeBron. I don't have any ill will towards LeBron. No, I don't. But look, LeBron don't have that killer instinct that Jordan, LeBron, and Kobe. They had it. You know what I'm saying? I have it. Give me the ball. Right. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Yeah. What? Give me the ball. 
Yeah. LeBron don't have the and I've watched. I'm not. I'm. I'm a Knicks. I'm still a Knicks fan. So when I watch these things, it's just Knicks. for kicks. <laughs> the Knicks. Yeah, I'm a Knicks fan. <laughs> even though they suck. <laughs> even though the Knicks suck. Uh, even though they suck. I'm. I, I. I'm not. I'm not somebody that goes with the wave. I'm a Knicks fan till I die. If the Knicks <laughs> ever win a, a championship, I might streak naked across New York City and get. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Anyway, the anyway. we, we, we're going off top. We're going off top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, but Nadia, yeah, yeah. Um, Kevin, I want to yes. thank you. Um, hold on. Thank you so much. Time tonight, brother. Thank you so as, much. As thank per you so usual, much. I know my lighting person going to come play with me. We usually finish at 10. But okay. again, I think that part of the conversation that we got into about the emotional impacts of this yeah. is something we really need to touch on. And even yeah. though we went over the time, this yeah, yeah it's, about, it's all good. It's, it's, it's all good and it's about it's putting on that kind of energy right now that people need. So I really yeah. want to thank you for your time tonight, brother. Thank continue you. Thank you so your, much. Continue doing your radio show, continue doing your thank IT you. show, and continue you. encouraging all the guys around us to, to, to spread what they need to. All right? Listen, um, real quick, real quick. Um, I did a webinar um, a couple of weeks ago um, called The Science of Sounds. Um, there's just certain things that we're trying to get together before we can release the curriculum. The science of sounds is still a go, but I'm only one man. And I don't want to talk. I don't want to teach you guys something until I perfected every aspect of it. And everybody's asking me about the streaming part of it. And I'm learning stuff every day and I'm perfecting and fine tuning stuff. So I don't want to go into the classroom until the professor knows everything what I need to know about everything. So I know about OBS, I know about Wire Wirecast, I know about Yellow Duck, I know about Restream, I know about um Lula TV. I know about all the hacks for Instagram. I know about the bit rates, I know about the settings, I know right. about um 1080p, 1080i, 70p. I could tell you about your cameras. I could tell you what chords. I could tell you the TTRS, um, <laughs> which a lot of uh, a lot of guys don't understand the TTRS. TTRS, yeah. The TTRS is the three, the ones with the three the rings. Three strikes, the, yeah. The, yeah. Versus the two, right? And I have a couple. You know, that, yeah. a lot of people want this. I have I have iRigs here. I have I have I could set up some DJs in New York City. So anybody who doesn't have this stuff. Hit me up. Uh, we can see if we can get you set up to stream live. And if, and, if, um, and, and if any DJ is trying to get stuff on Amazon, probably Kevin Crown has bought out all of it because I can't get it either. So, I mean, no, well, 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 <laughs> Amazon is not the only place. Good point. There's B, there's B and H. Good point. There's B and H. There's Adorama. There's VIP Electronics in in Brooklyn, even though you're not in Brooklyn. But there's VIP no, in. in, I'm in not. So. Right, 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 right. But there, there, there are other places. But there, there's B. Check out B and H. Um, Amazon. Uh, Amazon is for the little stuff. But um, stuff like that. Um, I I was fortunate to have a lot of this stuff just sitting in the studio. And when the pandemic hit, I I kind of hoarded a couple of things and just gave it out to my my DJ you just, friends. You remind me of those guys that go in 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 this in the store and buy out all the toilet paper. All the toilet paper. <laughs> No, okay, but okay. I gave no. I gave it away. I gave it to my people. I said, "Yo, here, here, here." I gave it to my people because I kind of, I kind of oh, saw man. what it was. But um, yeah. But anyway, I mean, thank you, man. Respect, bro. Thank, thank you so you much, time, man. Brother. We'll pick up Respect. in our carnival very soon. Definitely, yo. It's gonna be emotional. I'm just uh, don't judge me. It's gonna no, be emotional. Be judge, <laughs> right? All right, cool, All right, brother. Bro. Respect. All right.